Hey there, Jake from Drone Tech. Today we're going to be talking about an adjustable neutral density filter that works with the DJI Osmo and the Inspire One. A variable neutral density filter will allow you to adjust the amount of light entering in through the front of the camera. Now, if you're not sure why you would need this neutral density filter, um, I would suggest you watch this video here on frame rates and shutter speed for the DJI Osmo. So let's hop into the Go app so you can see exactly what this filter does. So by rotating this filter, I'm able to effectively reduce the amount of light coming in through the camera and produce a properly exposed video. The variable neutral density filters have three common problems that we're going to test this filter for today. The first is color shifting, the second is vignetting, and the third is a reduction in overall sharpness. Hey, but first, let's talk about how to install the filter. Uh, first, you're going to unscrew the existing filter from the front of the X3 gimbal. Then you're going to screw on the neutral density filter. So in this test, we took eight separate photographs of this color chart, each time stopping it down by one stop with the neutral density filter and compensating with the exposure. So as you can see, there is not that much color shift going on from a one stop to a negative eight stop. Now, one thing I wanna point out is that we did have this color chart in the center of the frame. And because the Osmo requires 1.5 meter minimum focus distance, we were not able to fill the frame with the color chart. We'll see in the upcoming tests if there's more of a shift around the outer edges of the image. So now we're going to look for vignetting and color shift. And the way we're going to do that is we set the Osmo into fully automatic mode. Uh, now, the really important part here is to set the white balance to a fixed white balance. We don't want it on auto because we want to see that color shift. So as we start filming, we're going to be twisting slowly the ring to the neutral density filter. And you'll see it gets slightly darker and then it'll compensate for the exposure. And uh, what we're looking for here is a shift in color or any dark spots or vignetting. Now at this point, we're starting to see some dark spots in the upper left and the lower right hand corner. And if we really crank it all the way down, it'll turn into an X in the center. Now this is well beyond the range of what the filter actually claims and uh, as we were shooting this we looked down at the ISO and saw that we had maxed out the ISO on the Osmo. So in this sharpness test we're going to be taking a series of photographs and analyzing the sharpness of each image. We will be stopping down the light coming in through the lens using the variable neutral density filter and we will be looking at a specific area of this image. So here you can see no filter on the left. Then we stop down by one stop until we reach an ND8. Next we're looking ND16 to ND128. And finally we'll show a huge variation from no filter all the way up to an ND128 which removes seven stops of light. So as you can see there really isn't much difference in the sharpness which was really surprising. Now, if you're interested in seeing the raw DNG files for this shoot, um, we did put them in the video description below. You can download them there. So our overall impressions of this newer variable neutral density filter is that it was much nicer than we expected. And for around $20, how can you beat the price? Now, it did have its limitations. I wouldn't use this above an ND32, but really, we've never needed anything more than an ND32. Most of the time, we're trying to remove between two and four stops of light to produce a usable video. So if you're interested in picking up one of these newer neutral density filters, uh, we did put a link in the video description below. If you found this video useful, please like it, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe.